Now that was the sound of an extruder drive gear clicking. If you've ever heard that sound, it might be because you're trying to print above your 3D printer's maximum flow rate. Stay tuned to hear more about this and how you can measure it. So, maximum flow rate is basically the largest amount of filament, plastic, that your 3D printer can push through in a given time frame. It's governed by almost everything in the printer, the drive gear setup that you have. In other words, how much force the drive gear can add to the filament to push it through. The hot end setup, so you've got the size of the heated zone, the nozzle size, uh, and potentially the cooling in there as well, that whole system. You've also got the filament. The filament actually makes quite a big difference, and if you've ever looked at the technical data sheet of your filament, you'll see there's something called melt flow rate. Uh, there should be anyway. And that tells you, based on their setup, how much plastic you can push through in a given time frame. You'll find that sort of generally higher quality uh, virgin materials are slower to push through, and once they've sort of been processed a few times, uh, it's easier, there's sort of less structure then, it's easier to mount down. Um, for example, our Pro PLA is slower, has a, has a lower maximum melt rate compared to our Eco PLA, which has been recycled once, um, and so is easier to push through. In order to measure the maximum flow rate, we're going to lock in a few variables. So you're going to want to set your temperature to whatever it is you generally print with. You're also going to want to stick with a nozzle size. Uh, I generally use 0.5 millimeters, but I know most of the 3D printing community likes the 0.4 millimeters that comes as standard with most 3D printers. So lock down those variables because you don't want those changing. Um, there's also those two ways you can measure it. You could vary your speed um, and keep the nozzle extrusion width the same or you could vary your nozzle extrusion width and keep the speed the same. Now because obviously the speed is affected by the acceleration I like to keep the speed the same and then you know you've got the same consistency there and just change the extrusion width. So what I've done is designed a print which you can produce in phase mode and then vary the extrusion width as you go up. Okay, so now we're ready to jump into the slicer. As I said, we're going to want to lock down our temperature. I'm using 210 degrees C, nozzle size 0.5, and also speed, I'm going for 2000 millimeters a minute, which is 33 and a third millimeters per second if you're using uh, a different slicer. In Simplified 3D, the way that I would do this is to take a process copy it down, and then in each one, adjust the nozzle diameter. So for the first one, I'm going to have nozzle diameter of 0.5 and an extrusion width of 0.5. The next one, I'll set the extrusion width 10% higher, so 0.55. If you're doing this with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you do 0.44 and so on. In Simplify 3D, you've got to remember to set the start layer and end layer at different heights. I'm doing this every 20 millimeters, as that's the increments designed for the tower, and also don't forget to set it to phase mode. Phase mode just means you do the outer perimeter. Now when you're happy with that, you can send it to the printer and get it printing. And when it's done, it will look something like lovely temperature tower. As you can see from the tower it's got the different percentage markings and that lets you know where it is you've got issues. For me, printed fine up to 140% but at 150% I started to notice some inconsistencies in the layer edges. 140% is the maximum safe flow rate that my 3D printer can achieve with a 0.5mm nozzle and a 210 degree print temperature. So with those results, I can now calculate the maximum flow rate of my 3D printer using 210 degrees C, 0.5 millimeter nozzle and 3D Tomorrow Pro PLA in Arctic White. To do that, I need to calculate the volume that was pushing out at that safe extrusion rate, that safe maximum flow rate where there were no uneven lines. That is the extrusion width at 140%, which was 0.7 millimeters. It is the layer height, 
which is 200 microns or 0.2 millimeters, and then also the printing speed, which was 2000 millimeters per minute. I've added a calculator to my website to allow you to do this because what we're effectively doing is calculating the volume of an elliptical cylinder where we've got the X and the Y as the extrusion width and the layer height and then we've got the, the Z or the height of this elliptical cylinder as the speed at which we're printing. And when you put all that information into the calculator you end up with a value that is the maximum flow rate. For me 879.6459 millimeters cubed a minute. When I've got this rate, I can then turn it back into a maximum speed by dividing it by uh, the elliptical cylinder, which is effectively the layer height and the extrusion width. And my normal extrusion width is 0.55, 10% over the nozzle diameter of 0.5. And my normal layer height is 200 microns, so 0.2 millimeters. So the area of that ellipse is uh, 0.35. So if I divide the maximum flow rate by 0.35, I get my maximum speed. And that is 2,513.274 millimeters a minute, or just under 42 millimeters a second, which is slower than you probably would have expected. If you wanted to calculate a different layer height, you would just change that parameter in the surface area of the ellipse and then divide the maximum flow rate by that new area to give yourself the new maximum speed at that layer height. Uh, so for example, with me printing out 120 micron layers, my maximum speed here would be uh, 4,188.79 millimeters a minute, just under 70 millimeters a second. Anyway, I hope this video was useful and informative for you. I realize it's not the simplest of content, so if you do get stuck with it, then just drop me a message below and I'll happily help you calculate it for your own system. I just need you to print one of these off and uh, tell me the parameters where you stopped getting perfect results. Well, ideally, the one below that. So where you stop getting perfect results, you use the one just below. Yeah, <laughs> that's the video done. I um, hope you enjoyed. Please do like and subscribe. And I have got lots more content coming up soon. And as I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to start covering business uh, tips and tutorials soon as well. So that should be fun. All right, see you next time.